You know, a lot of credit repair companies have this stigma, mm -hmm. right? Because ultimately people are in, you know, not to speak poorly of some of these companies, I think that there is many with good intentions, but a lot of them are in it for just the money and money is great, mm -hmm. but this really is about helping people and helping them transition and grow and teach them. And if I'm able to facilitate a software or a piece of technology that can help other companies do that and see mm -hmm. it through and do it quickly, at that point, um, I'd love for a credit search just to be in the background. All right, let's get it. David, what's up, my boy? What's up, homie? How are you? Doing good. How you feeling? Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, shit, man. So uh, we got the creator of my prep start here, Dave. What's up, man? So let me ask you, just, just like, I just want to dive straight into it. So uh, when it comes to like credit start, what made you want to create this? Why did you want to dive into the realm of helping people out with their credit? What did you, what inspired you to create this company? So this actually was a family trade. So mm -hmm. I've, I've been doing this for like, my probably since i was like 15. Mm. so it was a family trade my dad started the company maybe like 25 plus years ago uh it, it's how we earned our allowance been doing it for the last uh mm. 15 16 years plus uh in 2009 mm. my dad passed away mm. it ended up turning into a, a situation where i uh, the company that he had was uh, fairly large. And mm -hmm. at that point, it kind of dispersed. And I ended up taking uh, my own path and, mm -hmm. and setting it up uh, with uh, a very tech forward uh, foot. Fire. Yeah, to, to adapt with the times. So you've been having, so you've been running Credit Start for how many years now? Uh, we're 10 years in November. Damn. Yeah. That's dope. That's Thank dope. You. So when it comes to Credit Start, like what makes Credit Start different than most credit bureaus out there, credit companies, or am I even using the right term? You know, like what makes them different? Um, are you guys different? You know? So a, a lot of uh, companies, actually, I'd say like 80% of the companies, uh, they're still very prehistoric. They're still using uh, traditional tools to be able to produce the results, mm -hmm. right? So the things that we were doing, you know, 25 years ago when, when my, my dad still was running his company, mm -hmm. right? So, so for example, like what is that? As, like sending letters. I mean, okay. and I would tell you, you know, there's like these packages online where they're like pitching like, hey, you you can do it yourself mm -hmm. here by this $89 package. We'll give you this little rundown YouTube course and then we'll give you the letter so you can dispute. And the thing is that's so prehistoric uh, to where you, you'll never achieve productivity. You know? Yeah, because I remember that's what I was used to. Like uh, one of my friends who was telling me that how he got his, his uh, credit cleared up, he was like, the guys that are helping out would just send letters to whatever organizations. Yeah, credit bureaus. And just wait for them to like, they don't respond or something. If they don't respond, then does it like close out the credit or is that wrong? No, no. Like, in, in theory, that okay. that's correct. The thing is that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, a lot of the people that compromise their credit, they really did, right? They mm -hmm. really didn't pay their bills. They really were, uh, you know, ended up in the hospital where they have a ton of medical bills. They moved, they got evicted. You know, at the end of the day, shit happens, right? It's mm -hmm. inevitable. So it would be hubris of us to think that you can just fork out a few letters, right? And just, and, and dish them out at, at an $89 uh, product and be like, all right, problem solved. I, you know, mm -hmm. I undid all of the chaos that I've accumulated throughout the course of all of these years, right? So, uh, it is in theory anyone can do anything, right? I could I could um, change my own tire, mm -hmm. right? I I just you know it wouldn't be very efficient or safe. Yeah. So in theory we could all do anything. It really just buckles down to um, where we thrive, mm -hmm. and also if if um, we'd actually be successful or productive. So so with the prehistoric ways of doing it, what are the new ways of helping people build out build their credit in? create you know a new new opportunities for themselves to credit start what do you guys do that's different so we we ended up pumping a ton of energy 
uh, money and years into actually we coded and developed our own software mm. in the industry there's only one other company out there that's done that and the thing is because there was no competitors or anybody to challenge them what they ended up doing was they you know it is very much a, a an ad adapting right tech is all about adapting mm. and they never needed to adapt and they never needed to advance to where it looks like Windows 95 because everything, they, they never needed to. They never had any kind of challenge or any competitors in the industry. We've spent so much money and time advancing and being tech forward mm -hmm. to be able to uh, produce the volume that we do, to be able to uh, more efficiently mm. and structurally produce the results that our clients are looking for. No, so, um, you know, to, to answer your question mm. is we, we've been able to use a lot of the coding mm. to efficiently produce those results. Um, something that would take another company, say 30, 60 days, we can usually knock it out in like five days. Honestly, and, and that's true because I saw what you were able to do with my credit. Like for those that don't know, like my credit, like I had a, a massive fear of, of, finding a way to rebuild my credit because I know there's a lot of like scams out there. There's a lot of things that are presented like, hey, you pay this, it'll clean up all this debt. Yeah. And, um, you know, my issue, I had student loans, you know, I had a lot of issues on my credit just through that process. And I know working with you guys, seeing what you guys were able to do with my credit <laughs> in this quick amount of time, bro, I'm like, damn, I'm seeing my credit score go up like tremendously every month, every 30 days. I'm like, this has jumped like 80 points. This yeah. has jumped like 60 points. Like it's going up. So it's like, um, is that because of just the way you guys funnel things through your technology? Is that how you guys are doing it? Or what? One hundred percent. I mean, I'm I'm super. Um, the, the reason we ended up developing this this software and all of this coding, mm -hmm. it was um, because there there was there was no resources or tools that I could mm -hmm. use. Uh, my my dad had actually developed a software that was extremely smart. It was way ahead of its time, but unfortunately, when he passed, mm -hmm. I, I lost. We lost that software and all the coding that went with it. Wow! So at that point, uh, once I individually started my company, uh, a couple of years later, I, I I mean, you could use like Google Doc, mm -hmm. or actually there was no Google Doc at the time. Yeah, it was like facts, it was like facts. Excel. And um, that, that secondary company that, you know, I, I got their software, played around with it, and it was so prehistoric and outdated at that point. I was like, you know what, let's, let's expose ourselves and, mm. and um, take the financial risk and let me see if I can do it myself. I found yeah. a, a spectacular developer uh, who, you know, now became an incredible friend because we've been working together throughout the course of this last decade yeah. to, to perfect it. And what I've learned from tech and uh, for creating the software is that you're never done yeah and you're never ever ever done it technology has to keep growing it is you find it, ways it, to be more efficient you yeah know? It, it, it very is a, a pivot or pair situation Thanks. like you have to continue to adapt uh keep up with the times mm -hmm. the credit bureaus are constantly uh reconfiguring and and changing things mm -hmm. so we even have a department that specializes in in kind of uh, feeling where it's tender mm -hmm. to be able to be successful because what worked three months ago may not work we're anymore now. today. Facts. Yeah, so we're constantly in a position where we need to be um, uh, reevaluating the situation, take a step back, being like, you know what, we're not getting the same results that we we're achieving, mm -hmm. say, last quarter. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we need to do different. Depending. And then we need to reach out to, to our, our coding department as mm -hmm. well as our tech team and have them make some changes on our software That's to awesome. be able to c continue the efficiency and give the uh, clients the mm -hmm. same uh, turnaround time and, and result. And you guys are working at the highest level too because you guys always what's current, yeah. which is great, you know? Um, so I guess what my, my, my next question to you is like, what's like the first step of like, say like rebuilding bad credit that you guys you know? I, I guess that's a very, uh, because at the end of the day, it's, it's all relative, right? So mm -hmm. ultimately you can be that individual that has a, you know, a dozen student loans, mm -hmm. right? That needs to have them uh, removed. Mm -hmm. So at that point you would delete all the negative items, give you a neutral platform and start building from there, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can be the individual that just turned 18 years old today, mm -hmm. or you can be a foreign national that finally got their social security number and they're very successful, they make good money, but they don't have credit and you can't really be very productive in this country without credit, right? Facts. So uh, at that point, there is different credit building techniques uh, and products to assist you with kind of cutting in line and not having to start like a, 
like a, a kid from scratch uh, and have that wasted time mm -hmm. uh, take place. Majority of the people that have bad credit, a lot of it starts from college. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, make bad decisions when they first get out of high school. They're like, okay, well, I'm on my own. Let me take on this loan. Rather be through my business or yeah. be to go through college and, uh, or even not keeping up with payments. You know, you might have got a brand new car and you might have paid it for six months, but then shit fell through yeah. and now you're doing a repo. So long story short, um, what do you feel like is, is like the most common mistake that people tend to do when it comes to messing up the credit that you find you helping the most people with? The thing is that frustratingly, the system sets you up for failure, right? So nobody's there to teach you anything. There's no such thing as a, a class or a course. And even if there is, there's mm -hmm. so much um, compromised data on the internet that you know you could watch TikTok or you can like jump yeah. on YouTube videos, yeah. but you'll always see such like information that's not necessarily aligning with the next video that you watch on the mm. next clip, right? Thanks. So there's no one to teach you. Mm. So at that point, it could be your friends, mm -hmm. right? It could be your parents. Mm -hmm. But if you you unfortunately don't have parents that necessarily made also the best choices because there was no one to teach them, it kind of just keeps trickling down and so on. Generation. Absolutely. So uh, it, it's that that eagerness to grow up as soon as they turn 18, mm -hmm. right? They want to be adults. Yeah. Uh, it's the the you know, the, the school's pushing you for these student loans, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're telling you that this is the right way to go. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, now you can need to get to school. So you yeah. need a vehicle, mm -hmm. right? So at that point you go ahead and then you need to go get a car. Mm -hmm. It's your first time getting a vehicle. You don't have car history. Mm -hmm. So now you're you you put yourself in a situation where the interest rate's high unless you have parents that are willing to to help you. But not everybody I mean how many people are privileged enough to to have someone not just teach them, but now put themselves on the line to be willing to to mm -hmm. assist uh, their kid, knowing that if the kid drops the ball mm -hmm. at that point, they're going to be held liable as well, right, as a co-signer. Yeah. So now there's this kid. He finally turned 18. He doesn't have knowledge. He needs. He wants to go to school. So now it's student loans are pushed upon him, right? Mm -hmm. So we got that. You you scoot that over. Next is the same kid now needs to get to school. So he's going to get this car, and at that point, you know the the, the car dealership there that's their they need to make money, right? It's a business, so they're going to put them with a big down payment, which the kiddos don't have, yeah. and these um, heavy duty payments with high interest rates. Absolutely. So now the kid has this. So he has a job. He's paying into these car payments. He's now going to school. He's running tight on money because uh, ultimately the structure sets you up for failure. Mm -hmm. So you proceed to the next thing, which is now getting your credit card. So you're living off of that credit card because you already were in the negative from school and from your vehicle. And you're living off this credit card. Now the credit card's maxed out. And it's just this vicious cycle. So ultimately, yeah, by the time that these kids are graduating school, they have th their credits such a muck and they have so many it's a combination of all the student loans and it was that first car that they got repossessed or all the cars that all the times they were late because ultimately mm -hmm. eating comes before paying your car Fact. so it's it's all the rolling uh late payments or the repossessed vehicle because mm -hmm. they should they they realize as they're growing up that you know th throughout the course of that that those college years that maybe that wasn't the best idea you know i was that kid <laughs> Literally, what he just said, it was like, like I'm chipping right now because, bro, it's like I, 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 I remember that experience of like, okay, well, going to LA film school, my family, we can't just afford to pay this X amount of money per year, right? So I need to get financial aid. Okay, cool, got that. Got my car now. Now I'm working a job at Red Lobster at the time. I'm working at Red Lobster, and and I'm trying to keep up with making my car payments. And then you know, as I continue to build, it's like I always found myself uh, uh, not look, like looking at like credit or like debt in like a negative way. Sure. So meaning like when I got out of college, I remember feeling like, damn, like how am I supposed to build my credit right now? Because I'm already trying to play catch up on this. Sure. Um, my credit cards, I could barely keep up the payments on that because yeah. I'm using that to pay off my car. So it creates like this fear of like, let me like um, you almost I stopped caring about my credit. Sure, you know because I remember when I first got on on Ray Donovan, and I became that was my first time in my life being like a working actor. I'm now financially free. I'm now finally, I'm I'm a working actor, right? I'm making yeah. money, 
but I still didn't want to touch credit because yeah. I was like, yo, I feel like I, I was afraid of like credit cards. I was like, damn, like if I get a credit card, I might get in the habit of this, this, and this. But it's just creating the uh, the 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 self awareness and having the knowledge of how to utilize these credit cards. Cause I like the fact that you're like, hey Dom, when it comes to your credit card now, don't use more than thirty percent of it a month. Yeah. I'm like just little things like that. Just like we're like being with you guys. You guys have been able to. Give me like little hints here and there where it's like, oh, I wish I would have knew that when I was younger. Yeah. That made the world of a difference. On average, like how many credit cards should we have? Because for me, I I, I realized how nervous I was prior with like rebuilding my credit and how easy I actually became just working with people who actually knew what they were doing. So like on average, how, how many credit cards should a person even have? You know, to be honest with you, you know, uh, when it comes to credit, uh, Less is more, right? Okay. So, so people are really they look at it almost as if it was their money, mm-hmm. right? So they'll they'll apply, they'll get approved for a five thousand limit card, right? Yes. And they'll get super stoked. They'll be mm-hmm. like, "Shit, I got my first five thousand limit card!" And then they'll apply again because that's really cool. Mm-hmm. And then they get an eight thousand limit card, and they're super stoked. So all of a sudden, you know, you you go to. Um, you know, home goods and you want that, that 10% off the, uh, anywhere you go, everyone's trying to push a product on you. That's credit related yeah. so that you can get that 10% off. So you can get mm-hmm. that tote bag so that you can go to best buy, yeah, yeah, best buy the and best they give you these rewards and yeah. points. So you're so encouraged. The next thing you know, you have a saturation of cards. Mm-hmm. The more cards you have, the more likely you are to forget that one of them exists. And then you end up in this situation where you did have the funds. You would have mm-hmm. happily paid those, you know, 50 bucks minimum payment, but you forgot. And all, all, at the end of the day, it's mm. it doesn't matter what caliber of money you have. It doesn't matter what age you are. Um, it's an, you know mistakes are inevitable. Mm. They're going to happen. So all it takes is that one month for you to be out of country. That mo- one month where you forgot, uh, and and that's it. Like no, you'll get nice. that thirty day late payment. And the thing is, I'll take a collection. I'll take a charge off. I'll take uh, almost anything over a thirty day late mm. because it gets very complex and sticky. And you just compromised, depending on, on the structure, assuming every negative item, say, hurts you five to 45, 55 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you are late on something, it, it double dings you because we're right here, what's happening is there was an account that was positive, that was giving you history, that was establishing a relationship. So mm-hmm. you lost the points from this one yes. and you now gained a new negative item. So mm-hmm. when it's a collection, you're just gaining a negative item. Mm-hmm. So ultimately uh, evaluate it like those old school scales. So a Libra scale. Yeah. So if you're over here, you're taking something that's on this end and applying it here, you're getting hit twice and it's that the, the mm-hmm. weight doubles down. So ultimately, um, late payments are not what you want to have. That'll set you back. It's it, just it, adding. More yeah, more it does. It it is so. So ultimately, what you want is a good little, um, well-rounded puddle of cards. Maybe like, I think three to five is perfectly fine, mm-hmm. and I don't think anything beyond that is necessary. Um, you know, you you want to be well-rounded. Mm-hmm. So at that point, you know, car's cool because for the next car, you're going to need some car history. Yeah. Ultimately, everyone wants to get into that mortgage and own their own home. Yeah. And you have that little mini American dream at that mm-hmm. point, right? Mm-hmm. Anything beyond that is a little, you know, greedy is a, 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 a rough word, but it, it's there's no need to get that excited. It isn't your money. Mm-hmm. And at that point, you're putting yourself in a situation where you're set up for failure. Yeah. And, um, you know, there, there was no need for it to begin with. So what if, what if I'm a person that put myself in that situation, right? Sure. Where now my credit's not the best and I'm, I'm now ready to start applying for credit cards, but I'm not getting approved. What do I do? So it's a slippery slope, right? So you need to be able to gauge, um, and that's something that goes a little more in depth, but you need to know which banks are a little have higher standards Mm. and which banks are more uh prone to work with uh new individual you know individuals with with new credit right so if you're jumping into these like you know uh like you know say a a chase sapphire as your Mm. first card it's a little ambitious being a a kid straight out of college that's 18 years old Mm -hmm. so at that point retails retail cards aren't the worst idea also if if you're in a position where like girlfriend boyfriend parents are you know if you're you're in a position where someone's willing to be that supportive of you mm-hmm. they could always also add you on as an authorized user mm-hmm. right so authorized users pretty much piggybacking off someone else's credit mm-hmm. um 
So as they make the payments, correct, your credit grows without you even have to even spend, yeah you you, you could have to even touch that. And the thing is, it, so I could add you on as an authorized user today. I have a ten thousand limit card. Mm-hmm. I've had it for the last five years. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter that you just turned eighteen. It's not relevant. Ultimately, you need to keep in mind the approval process is it's a computer, so it's mm-hmm. not a person. It's a computer that determines if it's a yes or a no immediately. Mm-hmm. So assuming I add you to my card, it shows up on your credit. You just went from having no credit score or uh, having maybe a, a relatively low credit score, say like a, a 600, 620, mm. to if you have no negative items, a, a good authorized user will get you 700 plus like this. 15 to 45 days, no mm. problem without batting an eyelash. So it's if you're in a position where you have the opportunity for someone to add you, uh, that's great. So what if I'm somebody that's trying to build up my credit and I'm not even getting proof of credit lines. I don't have access to an authorized user. I don't have a co-signer. In my credit dirt shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do then? You know, so it wasn't just go to Crest Art. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I was just about to say. I mean, look, you could, you could, you, you could uh, start like a kiddo, right? Mm-hmm. At that point, you can go get a secured card, mm-hmm. and that will put you in line. Also, retail cards tend to be a little easier to so get like approved. Capital One is like, a, like a a ca- card, a, a, right? Yeah, so Capital One, Discover, they offer okay. secured cards. At that point, you can start the traditional way. Uh, but we also do have products and services that we're able to provide to be able to kind of give you that boost mm-hmm. uh, and get you started so so you don't have to go that route. What are the top three suggestions that you would you would give to somebody to like maintaining like an optimal credit report? You know what? Um, Pay your things on time. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's so major. And as obvious as it seems, people always forget to pay their things on time. So maybe set up auto payment. Mm-hmm. Um, don't go, don't be emotional when you get denied. Yeah. It's almost like instinctually we become like, uh, we throw tantrums when we get when we get denied, right? So we'll go to Best Buy, we'll get denied, and our ego is bruised a little bit. Mm-hmm. So then we'll like right away go to Nordstrom and apply, and it's then like, they'll deny me. I got I, no credit. Yeah. So now that now you're you're now you're throwing a tantrum. Now you're upset, and you're like you don't understand why. Mm-hmm. And it, and it's not just credit's not the only variable factor. Mm-hmm. You know that there is it's income. Uh, how long you've lived somewhere is is they want to make sure that you're someone stable. So some mm. computers, that's what they're looking for, mm. like your income, your stability, uh, you know, your 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 rent. Mm. Right? So all of these things. How long have you have you been with your employer? So if the info that you just applied with matches to the info that's on the credit report, so that they can make sure that you're not lying, right? Mm. So ultimately, it could be a situation where you just moved homes, right? So I just moved homes in the last six months. They don't actually have my new address. Uh, I went ahead and applied for this credit card and all of a sudden I got denied because you know I triggered a red flag. Why is this address not there? And now I'm I'm very uh, bruised ego. I'm So I'm going to Nordstrom, doing mm-hmm. the same thing. Every time you run your credit, I'd say there's a value of like point, point 0.5 point. So like half a point to like all the way up to like three, four point value every time you run your credit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's this weird, in fact, even if you, look it up on the the credit bureau's website it says like as long as i, I don't know the exact verbiage but it says like as long as you're uh, applying for things within the same like say 24 hours it, the the credit bureaus know you're shopping around for a car mm. or whatever it may be so they're not going to ding you the the points per inquiry and the thing is that 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 isn't right yeah i've seen so many yeah. before and afters where where they're trying to get a house, I have the original credit report. Mm-hmm. They go car shopping the next day and they get the new credit report. And I see that their credit score just tanked yeah. from how many of times that they apply. That, you know, uh, what a car dealer does is they shotgun your score. So they send mm-hmm. it to all these banks to see who's going to give you the best rate and who's going to approve you. And in the process, it, it just dunks your credit score. Mm-hmm. Two things happen there. They got to keep that deal, right? Because you're not going anywhere. Your yeah. credit score just took. Yeah, they got you. Yeah, yeah, they got you, yeah, yeah. They got yeah, you locked yeah. in. You're not going anywhere. But, but again, even if that wasn't their intention, mm-hmm. and it doesn't change the fact that now your credit score did take a hit, mm-hmm. and inquiries fall off uh, every two years. Uh, they start as say three months, six months go by. The value of how much they hurt you slowly starts decreasing to the point leading to the two years when they fall off. Mm -hmm. These inquiries, right, they stack up. They're Mm -hmm. decreasing your score, decreasing your score. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it doesn't matter what the module is. It doesn't matter what the computer is. 
everyone is going to deny you. When you throw that tantrum and you start applying everywhere because you're super emotional about whether you're getting, mm. uh, you know, you're, you're not getting approved and you don't understand why, Credit Karma is telling you you have a 750 credit score. Mm. So at that point, uh, by you adding all these inquiries, it triggers the computer to think that something's wrong, yeah. right? Are you that person that you're struggling financially? So you're just applying everywhere because mm. you're gonna go nuts, max out the cards and stop paying. Mm. So it triggers something within the system where I'd say after, after three inquiries, just give up. No one's going to approve you. And if they do, Facts. it's gonna be these tiny limits with these crazy rates because you're you're considered high risk. Why is that like, sometimes I check my credit karma and like my score on credit karma is different from like my auto score. Like what's up with that? Okay, so uh, I guess the best analogy I could use for that is say you go to a gym, right? Okay. So you jump on their scale. It tells you you weigh, you know, uh, 150 uh, whatever reference they use, right? Mm -hmm. So you jump on that scale, it tells you th this weight. And then as you're working out, it keeps telling you the variable if you're going up or down. Mm -hmm. So that scale belongs to that gym and that gym only. So you don't actually genuinely know how much you weigh in the real world. You only have that gym scale as a reference to know if you're progressing or regressing. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, it Credit Karma works exactly the same. That's their module. They're gauging what they find to be important. And ultimately, if they could find something to be valuable that may not be relevant to where they're on their system, it'll say your credit score just docked 30 points. Mm. Uh, when if you ran your credit, say with a mortgage broker or a vehicle, it probably didn't change at all. Right. Uh, and just the same, you could do something that could plummet your score in the real world and you go on Credit Karma and it may not have been affected as much. Um, mm. The only genuine real way to get your credit scores is unfortunately getting an inquiry, taking the hit, uh, you know, taking the hit on the chin, yeah. uh, losing those points. But that's the only genuine real way. And also uh, there's different scoring modules. Mm -hmm. uh, and within those three bureaus, there's these um, scoring modules that, that you know, there's like the FICO score, the the Fair Isaac score. There's so yeah. much that, that ultimately is... As, as long as your balances are low, as mm -hmm. long as you're well-rounded and you don't have this crazy amount of cards, mm -hmm. uh, th that's all that really matters is just uh, making sure you keep yourself nice, clean, responsible, uh, and organized. And it'll organically uh, transition in your favor. An average turnaround time mm -hmm. for a client is anywhere between 15 to 90 days, mm -hmm. right? So at that point, say we're going through the process, we're able to eliminate these accounts, at that point, we do this little um, educational review with them. Once we're wrapping up, is hey, we're you know we're coming to a close. All mm -hmm. the negative items are coming off. We suggest you you know talk to a family member about an authorized user, or hey, a secured card, or whatever route uh, makes mm -hmm. sense to what their old their, their original goal is. Right? Mm -hmm. Some people come to us and they want a house or a car, or so. At that point, we kind of guide them in the direction of what their original goal was. And, and it does typically stop there. At mm -hmm. that point, we give them the mini educational tutorial, we cleaned up their credit, and they get to go back into the real world and try again. Okay. Um, and you know, we, we've, we, we've lived off referrals for the last decade. Mm. You know, call it ego. But for the first, I, we just got Instagram last year. Wow. Yeah, we were 100% brick and mortar. We were 100% mm. referral based. Um, I did, I, the, the irony is we're so tech forward. We mm -hmm. created and developed the software that's probably the most advanced uh, credit software that currently exists. And then we sat there and I was anti-social media and, <laughs> and, and, you know, and anti, I just felt like, and what ended up happening is time went on and then all these individuals started jumping on the like, like TikTok, Instagram, mm -hmm. YouTube, and the, the, they really didn't have that much knowledge and they really didn't have that much experience, but because they jumped on in the beginning. They able to grow. Yeah, they grew that. And at that point I felt like if I jump in right now, right? So mm -hmm. I'm gonna create my Instagram, like say this year, despite the fact that I've been in the industry for a decade mm -hmm. and I've been, uh, I'm sorry that I've had this company for a decade and I've been in the industry for uh, pretty much what 16, from 16 year old forward, uh, I feel like, social media took from my credibility because there was the guy next door that had uh, this crazy amount of followers. And even though he'd been doing the, the, the you know, credit repair process and, and the, the sharing his knowledge throughout the course of the last three years, uh, I didn't want to just jump in as a newbie on social media. Mm. So again, call it ego. I, I tried my best to stay away from social media until I noticed that 
that I was stealing from myself. Yeah, I, I think it's awesome that, that you're choosing to now take this path because again, it's just it's just another another group of people you're missing out on. Yeah. You're missing out. So yeah, it's word of mouth and stuff, but there's so many people, that's why on TikTok, on uh, Facebook Reels, YouTube Shorts, you're looking at all these Reels where like these creators are making these like one minute videos of like how to finesse the law. Yeah. You see that? You're like, well, you know, did you know if you walked into this? Well, yeah, how'd yeah. you know that? Well, follow someone. So she's a lawyer. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, so, but it's like, oddly they work, but the difference is you guys have real credibility. You guys have real high net worth clientele. And you guys also have clientele that are just your everyday individual that just trying to figure out how to start from ground zero again, you know? So yeah. you taking the time to actually articulate this. I think people need this. So thank you. Yeah, thank you for uh, having me. What's next for you guys? You know, I I, I want to transition from not just being a, a you know a credit analyst firm or a credit repair company and and push the the tech side of things more aggressively. I want to focus more on actually sharing the technology that I've developed and all the coding that that's taken place throughout the course of this last decade, mm. and turn into a, more of a tool or an assistance for other companies out there that may be just starting up mm -hmm. or may still be old school using like a Google Doc or, or Excel mm -hmm. and help them transition into actually helping people mm -hmm. and being more efficient and pivot us into a white labeling service. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of credit repair companies have this stigma, mm -hmm. right? Because ultimately people are in, you know, not to speak poorly of some of these companies, I think that there is many with good intentions, but a lot of them are in it for just the money. And money is great, mm -hmm. but this really is about helping people and helping them transition and grow and teach them. And if I'm able to facilitate a software or a piece of technology that can help other companies do that and see mm -hmm. it through and do it quickly, at that point, um, I'd love for a cred cert just to be in the background and and be that resource tool i mean look what you uber's done you yeah. know they are initially just when it comes to just driving now the software has made it uh, made it accessible for restaurants everywhere now to add another asset to them because they're not able to get on uber eats and not have people delivering and do picking yeah. up and, and they're making so much more money off of their restaurant versus just walking through the door because of the fact they able to white label this technology it's a little bit more on the grander scale, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like I think that's uh, it's fire, you know. I think more people need this, and that's why you're gonna win, bro. Thanks, bud. You know what I'm saying.